Oh, I will speak about very small portion of well, the last uh, works of Rocklin. But first I want to make a remark uh, to the previous talk. Uh, I decided to not to uh, use the time for questions, but I want to just to make a remark. I remember that once I was uh, caught by uh, Novikov in Moscow University, as he used to do this, to present some of his ideas in cycles uh, for many, many iterations. And he told me that once he um, discovered additivity of signature, which is called nowadays Rocklin's additivity, uh, sorry, Novikov additivity. Uh, and uh, when I came back to Leningrad and visited Vladimir Abramovich, I told him about this. He became quite sad and told me, it was in his apartment, if you will go now to the park, I can show you the place where I told this theorem to Novikov. <laughs> Additivity theorem. It was published in the joint paper. Uh, there were several uh, results in this paper, not separated, of course. But I decided it's... In what year? It's what, what year the, the paper or what year the, the conversation? Conversation. Conversation. It, it was some time in the... 1965. No, no, no. It was in the 80s. In the 80s? In, in, in ah. the beginning of the 80s. My conversation to, yes, with, with Rocklin. And uh, he was really sad and uh, we discussed this. It's not time now to, to talk about this, but at least... Uh, this is uh, one thing that I had to remark. Of course, we are here all uh, not uh, involved into this, but I decided that as a person who attended this talk, I have to uh, mention this. And uh, now let me tell you about uh, the last works. Uh, it was really about 10 years. Vladimir Abramovich uh, told that he complained that he never stayed in one area that long. That it was because he was sick and uh, could not move that fast. It was at the end of this 10 years. But it, it was really about 10 years and just at the end of this period before his death, he started to move uh, to a new then area, uh, differential topology of four manifolds created by Donaldson and uh, others. And uh, uh, he even got some results, but it was never published because he died. But now let me come back to the, to the uh, origin of this uh, series of work. Uh, so, initially algebraic geometry studied uh, real algebraic varieties. But in the 20th century, the, the field of complex numbers pushed out the field of real numbers and uh, at that time, by the 70s, the leading algebraic geometers did not think that any interesting algebraic geometry over real numbers exist at all. I remember uh, that it was a discussion when I had defense of my uh, doctor dissertation. It was a hidden discussion because it was hidden in, in uh, remarks by Shafarevich and uh, Rocklin. But it was clear that from Rocklin that Shafarevich at, at the beginning of this period didn't even take this seriously. And this will play some role in, in, in the story. The only famous result at that time was uh, known as Harnack theorem, proven in 1876, according to which the, uh, set, uh, the number of connected components of real curve doesn't exceed the genus of this curve plus one. Uh, there are many proofs of this. Karnak, it was a PhD of Karnak, sort of. What's the definition of genus? Genus? The number of handles. Hmm? The number of handles, if you like. No, but the left-hand side, what does it mean? 
left hand side. What is that? Real algebraic variety? Uh, it's the set of real points of curve A. Oh, curve A is an algebraic yeah. object. You look at the complex variety, the complex points. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to use the complex numbers. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. A anytime when you have real numbers, you can tensor it by complex numbers, and you are in the complex world. This is the way to escape from the reality. And uh, uh, this <laughs> way shows that there is some restrictions on topology. Uh, just the number of connected components cannot be greater than the genus, the number of handles plus one. Uh, Hilbert interests uh, to the subject and the 16th problem were provoked uh, by inability of Hilbert to figure out what are uh, curves with maximal number of components uh, of the curve of degree 6 in the plane. It was known by Harnack that the number of com connected components is at most 11. And in the case of 11, uh, Hilbert knows uh, new two types. And uh, one could draw eight other types, which uh, were not at this time ruled out by any theorem. And he couldn't do anything with this. So he uh, proposed an approach how to deal with this. And he called to uh, attack, to attack this problem. It was his, uh, one of uh, problems from his famous list of uh, mathematical problems in the second uh, ICMA. International Congress of Mathematicians. Uh, so uh, this call was not taken too intensively, and uh, really it was solved by Gutkov, completely realized uh, by the year of 1969. So it took uh, two thirds of century to do. It was a really difficult work. Uh, it was a sort of uh, singularity theory for curves of high order uh, without much precedent, so it was done by hand and it was very difficult to, to read, to evaluate. Uh, he uh, had to defend second dissertation. Probably if uh, in Russia they were not accustomed to have second dissertation to get a professorship, uh, probably we could have known this result. But, but uh, it was uh, in place then, and uh, the problem was solved. The problem after that was to defend this. this. Ah, here is a picture. I borrowed this picture from a recent paper uh, by Sturmfels and uh, a group of other people. Here are six, uh, 56 uh, isotopy types. Each of them is tiny, but if you can Come, come closer, you can see. This is how the uh, ovals can be arranged. On the f upper uh, row, you have curves, uh, three curves with 11 ovals. One more uh, is possible. This is this. Oops. So it's distinguished around what can you say more? So this one was not known to Hilbert. It was constructed by Gutkov later. Very late, the, uh, he, he finished uh, the work on dissertation and then he uh, was forced by a referee to, to find it because the, the picture was not symmetric. But anyway, uh, I, I don't want to, to speak about this nice story. Uh, I just wanted to show a picture. This picture will be shown again in uh, the end of the talk with colors. The colors will be the result of Rockley, in a sense. Uh, so it was not an easy problem, anyway. So there are three types of 11, of curves with 11 ovals. And Gutkov uh, formulated a conjecture about a general curve of even degree uh, with maximal number of connected components. That the, Euler characteristic of the half of the projective plane bounded by this curve is congruent to the square of degree over 4, modulo 8. Here it is exactly what describes the top row. So it was really 
difficult dissertation, and it was needed to overcome skepticism of algebraic geometries. So it was not an easy task. Arnold asked Rochlin to support the dissertation. Well, uh, when asked if he had verified proofs, Arnold answered, no, but I proved some of the results and proved the conjecture. It was very strong reason to, to accept dissertation. And dissertation was defended. I don't know any uh, serious uh, mistakes in this dissertation. It was really difficult to read. It's a whole book. It was difficult to publish. Well, but by that time, Arnold was about, aware about Rocklin's work on four manifolds. This was the end of the 60s. Uh, this was the time when uh, Rocklin was interested in extension of his congruence to the situation when there is a surface in a manifold. The manifold is not necessarily spin. So some congruence is modular 16 were obtained. And uh, it wasn't hidden somewhere. Uh, it was, uh, I couldn't find the reference, probably there is no reference, but I had heard rumors that it was presented in uh, International Congress of Mathematicians somewhere in sections, in, in not official sections, in 1966. And then it was uh, some lectures in Moscow Mathematical Society, so at least Arnold was aware about this. And Arnold uh, wanted to uh, join this for manifold uh, stuff with uh, two-dimensional real algebraic geometry. Arnold had hours long phone conversations between Leningrad and Moscow, uh, asking uh, Rocklin what is going on. He was not a specialist in this kind of topology then. Uh, so he looked for bridges between this plane curve and four-dimensional topology, and he proved a half of uh, Woodcock's conjecture. It was a great work. Uh, so it was, what, what, what is half? Half of congruence mod eight is a congruence mod four. The conjecture was mod eight congruence, it was mod four congruence. And uh, several inequalities which are uh, not any easier than this. Uh, the the uh, root of success was that uh, there was really a bridge found between uh, these two subjects via complexification and two fold branch coverings. So it was, it was not, not just proof step by step, but it was really a bridge between two theories. And uh, then the, the results of not very deep results, but nonetheless uh, important results of four dimensional topology were used. It was published in May 1971. And Rocklin proved after that the Gutkov conjecture in whole module 8 almost immediately, published in uh, less than a year. It was based on uh, the sequence of results of Rocklin, this famous results starting with uh, uh, congruence uh, for mod 16 for the signature. Here is the first of them. And then there was a Kirvier Milner theorem about uh, uh, class, characteristic classes uh, in oriented four manifold no. uh, if the signature is not congruent mod 16 to the self intersection of this surface, then this surface is not homeomorphic to sphere. And then it was uh, this congruence, which was reported really in the uh, Congress. You mean yeah. the signature divided by 8 is congruent to that? Mod 2. Where? This? Second? Yeah. Signature divided by 8 is congruent to that? Yes, you are right. Mod Thank mod you. Two. Uh, mod 2. Well, uh, right inside one makes sense. Can, can we say in this way? I think we, we can. This way? It's, it's also you, correct. You're using the fact that... Well, signature must be divisible by 8, and so it, is, it makes sense to divide it by 8 beforehand, but then you have to divide also the self-intersection number. Well, anyway, 
Uh, I'm not sure. I, I uh, wrote this by memory, and also it matches the next theorem. So I think that it should be correct. OK? Anyway, uh, there was this progress, and then this progress continued. But uh, the last theorem uh, was not appropriately published before the proof of Gutkov theorem, Gutkov conjecture. Uh, and uh, if you apply this uh, to two-fold covering of complex projective plane branched over the uh, complexification of the curve, uh, and uh, the fixed point set of one of two involutions covering uh, the complex conjugation in CP2, then you uh, obtain uh, the Gutkov uh, congruence. You, you have to select which of two liftings you take. It depends on the uh, degree of the curve, uh, but it's technical details. You, you can sh so I have no time to tell about this. I just uh, want to point out these things. You're, you're right, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Hmm? I'm wrong. Yeah, no problem. I can also do mistakes, and now I want to tell about mistakes. <laughs> the next slide is about mistakes. Okay? Uh, so in the first proof of Gutkov's congruence, there was a mistake. So what I just reported was mistaken. Uh, it was made in a calculation of the Arf invariant, and it was hidden by reference to some symmetry arguments. By symmetry arguments, we obtain that some value of uh, this R invariant uh, on some classes, on real classes, are zero. There is a symmetry there, but there is no symmetry argument which you can use. And this was not observed for five years. It was found by Alexis Marin five years later in 1977 when nobody was interested already in this. Well, after that, the interest was raised, of course. Uh, Marin uh, found the gap in arguments, constructed an example of a curve of degree 10 in which a technical statement was wrong, really was very precise, and found another proof of Gutkov's con conjecture with, uh, used, which used a different manifold. So the, the other four, ma four manifold which was used was the, not the two-fold branch covering, but uh, the other manifold which was the base of two-fold branch covering uh, with the total space CP2. So you take CP2 and quotient out by the complex conjugation. Uh, he used a more advanced version of spin congruence for non-orientable uh, surface. It was needed because there the surface was not uh, already orientable. And uh, the new Congress was timely proved by Guillaume and Marin, by, by the same author and co-author, and also by uh, Matsumoto. Anyway, uh, th they know then about themselves, of course. And uh, then Rocklin joked about this. He asked if it was a refutation or correction of, the, of his proof. Because, well, the, the proof in the previous uh, setup was destroyed completely. And uh, they were very proud by, by this destructive word. But on the other hand, they just changed the manifold where the symmetry arguments could be used. And they proved the same congruence that had to be proven. Well, anyway. Uh, there were many uh, speculations. Rocklin made, uh, not, it was not the only mistake he made. He was uh, sometimes mistaken. For, uh, for example, uh, he uh, published a paper in 1965, which is not referred anymore, for a good reason, because uh, he realized in this uh, paper two quadratic forms by intersection forms of four manifolds, which are not realizable due to Donaldson theorem. But the, the paper is very interesting. 
It was just some mistake somewhere and it was difficult to observe. I didn't know about this mistake before Donaldson walk. And uh, uh, so for, for example, uh, the notion of membranes, some algebra of membranes on surface in the four manifold was introduced. So it was very good paper. Just the main result was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the argument proved something. The argument proved something. And uh, it was very interesting to, to listen to his uh, stories about other mathematicians, how they speak about what uh, should be in a good work by a good mathematician. This point of view changed with new works of these people. So sometimes, say, Kolmogorov said that, according to Rochle, that uh, many things may be wrong, but the main result should be correct. And then he published a paper where the main result was wrong, <laughs> and he changed this uh, description. But anyway, let me go further. So uh, the mistake didn't matter because in four months after the paper with proof of Gutkov conjecture, uh, Rocklin published a paper, Congruences Modular 16 in the 16th Hilbert problem, where he generalized a Gutkov conjecture to many varieties of any dimension and proved this very cleanly. The, the proof was much simpler. Uh, and uh, here is a sketch of this proof. So we assume that one of, one of the theorems, assume now that we have even dimensional variety A, uh, that the total Betting number is uh, maximum. So it is uh, equal to the total Betting number of the set of complex points. Then, so the, this is the theorem. Then the only characteristic of the real part should be congruent to the signature of complexification, mod 16. Very nice statement, right? Huh? These two characteristics, only characteristic and signature, signature is sort of complexification, and they are now together, and they play this nice role there. So the proof, uh, due to some simple arguments from Smith theory, when uh, this uh, maximality condition is satisfied, the homology group split into direct sum of uh, eigenspaces, plus and minus one, for, for the complex conjugation involution. And then the only characteristic, uh, by obvious duality, can be, so it is self intersection, so it's Euler class of uh, real part, uh, since the tangent bundle is isomorphic to normal with sign correction. Uh, we have uh, this equality. Then uh, by Atzinger theorem, it is uh, the signature of involution. And then the signature of involution is calculated and we have uh, the extra terms which are signatures of even forms. So this uh, uh, sigma plus minus uh, should be divisible by eight. And then we get that the uh, difference between the only characteristic and signature of the whole uh, complex variety uh, is uh, divisible by 16. So that's basically the proof with two references. The references are also very interesting, very important, and then they generated lots of progress. Uh, there was also a theorem for odd dimension, but it is more complicated. It involves two-fold branch covering. So it covered the, the previous case, no mistake. Well, there was a mistake, but it was recoverable. Uh, and now I want to say a few words about the paper which was published at the same issue of the Journal of Functional Analysis and Applications. By the way, because the first paper by Arnold was published in the Journal of fin fun Functional Analysis and Applications, all the further works in this area also were publishable there, and uh, most of them were, besides those which were published in 
успехи. So, Slava Harlamov, it's there, was then a first year graduate student of Rocklin. And uh, his first paper, he uh, proved, uh, he, he gave an answer to uh, one of Hilbert's questions included to 16th uh, problem. He proved that the maximum number of uh, real components of a quartic surface in RP3 is 10. By the way, the, the maximum number of uh, real components in uh, of sets of uh, quintics of surfaces of degree 5 still is unknown. It's the sharpest result up to now. Uh, and it was, uh, well, uh, a crucial ingredient of Harlamov's proof was a congruence mod 8 for surfaces in RP3, which is an analog of uh, Arnold uh, congruence mod 4. So it is just the next dimension. Uh, absolutely different proof, different approach, and this difference was crucial for uh, Rocklin. Really, this, this paper influenced uh, Rocklin's proof of generalized uh, Gutkov's conjecture. So I, I want to say just a few words about uh, the role of environment. So it was a great seminar of Rocklin, which met once a week, uh, for which he pre prepared program once a month and asked students, not some guests, as it happens in America, to uh, tell stories uh, of recent papers. And uh, it was very useful in this development. Well, this is an uh, original uh, development, but by, by the first year students. Also, students were very good. It's time. Well, I don't want to diminish your role. It's just, I say that the environment, is, this was great. Uh, and then uh, right after that, Harlamov found numerous generalization of Rockland conference to other classes of real algebraic variety. So it was a breakthrough, really. Uh, In the first two papers on topology of real algebraic varieties, Rochlin proved uh, the power of topological methods for proving restrictions on topology of real algebraic varieties. Uh, he made available new technical tools which complemented uh, those which were introduced, discovered and introduced by Arnold. For example, simple but efficient tools from Smith theory allowed him to realize uh, that Smith inequality is a fundamental restriction on topology of real algebraic varieties. The congruence mod 16 are extremal property of the Smith uh, inequality. So as, as uh, in an agreement with a general idea uh, about inequalities, when inequality and inequality becomes equality, something should happen something dramatic, and here we, we have this. Uh, Rocklin attracted strong students who continued this breakthrough. And then I want to tell about the next two papers, which were completely different, which are called somehow similar, Complex Orientations of Real Algebraic Curves, published in 1974, and Complex Topological Characteristics of Real Algebraic Curves, published as a survey paper in Uspechi in 1978. Rocklin told me once that Gilfant um, blamed him you know, you used to uh, discover new theories, build new theories, and now you prove theorems. <laughs> so this was a turn when, uh, from proving theorems, he moved to uh, new theories. But first of them, well, the very idea of objects in the, in the topology of real algebraic varieties changed. 
It was not realized really even at the second paper, but the second paper was an essential move towards this direction. Uh, but uh, originally, we looked at the real domain, and what we see, what we song. So it's, it's uh, uh, just apology of it. Well, maybe with uh, input like uh, degree or whatever. Uh, but there is also complexification. It is always around, and how this real and this real part is a part of complexification. So how this real part is sitting there is also important. So real, the topology of real algebraic varieties uh, from the new point of view, which was uh, then uh, promoted by Rochlin, was that we have to study not just topology of real parts, but also how it sits in the complexification. In the first paper of these two, this point of view was not accepted at all. It was just about maximal curves, curves with maximal number of connected components. Uh, but uh, the play was already between real part and complexification. So he observed that any maximal curve, a curve where the number of components is really equal to the uh, genus plus one, uh, the, the real part divides complexification into two halves, and uh, these two halves are complex. So they have orientations, and they induce orientations on the boundary, and the boundary is this real part. So on the boundary, you have two different opposite to each other orientations, and if you look just in the real domain, you see nothing. You see just ovals, and from nowhere, they got oriented in two ways, opposite to each other, but if the number of connected components is large, then they can be oriented in many ways, uh, but there are two distinguished orientations. And these orientations satisfy some uh, requirements. So Rochlin found a simple restriction on the complex orientations. How much time do I have? Just a minute, okay. Uh, so, uh, I can even tell you what is the source of this formula. So let us consider. Uh, ah, it's not that easy. Ah, here. So you have uh, this uh, curve in the real domain. It uh, bounds half, and there is another half, and there is orientation. Oh. <laughs> Is it useful? No. I think you have better chance with the one on this side. Yes. Oh. Yes, better chance to, to rotate it. Of <laughs> Thank you. Well, so many. So I have uh, a curve. So the real part just divides it. You take half of this curve. You close uh, these uh, ovals with disks which are in the real domain. Well, disks overlaps because on the real domain these uh, ovals may, din may be nested. You get in this way a cycle. One half complex and uh, one half, well, with disks. You can take another half and the same disks and calculate you have two cycles, you cal calculate the intersection number. You can do this in two ways, abstract ways, just by figuring out what is the role of these two surfaces in the homology. Uh, so it gives you the square of half of the degree. And uh, on the other hand, you can calculate it geometrically. And you get some combinatorial number, which was not uh, easy to uh, explain. So I don't want to, to explain it right now. Uh, it is something like integral of uh, the index squared of a point uh, against the Euler characteristic, but I don't want to. It, and it was not in this way then. Anyway, this is a very simple formula, elementary. And it gave uh, more elementary proofs of some previous results. Not congruence mode 16, but congruence mode 8. Like Arnold were obtained uh, very easily. Now I want to... Oh. 
cannot hide this and open that. <coughs> well, Rocklin found simple restrictions on complex orientations. This is complex orientation formula. So this, this thing is, if I remember correctly, the square of degree over 4 equals that. I may be wrong. It doesn't matter. And uh, then in the next uh, paper, it was oh, not yet this formulated as a new approach, but everything was prepared. Uh, so it was a survey. He uh, discussed the notion of types of a curve. Some curves, as this one, divide complexification. Some are not dividing complexification, and they're called type 1 and type 2. They were introduced by Klein in 1876, but after that, nothing happened for quite a while. Uh, then he introduced the notion of complex and real schemes. So real schemes is what we see, just distribution of ovals on the plane with the topology, which is just a partially ordered set. Uh, rooted. Uh, and complex, then you say if it is type 1 or type 2, and if it is type 2, uh, type 1, then you add complex orientations. Uh, then if you look at real scheme, you may anticipate that there are three opportunities. Either if each curve of this real scheme is of type 1 or of type 2, or it may be both. And they behave completely differently. Uh, he discussed criteria to belonging of a scheme to one of the type. Uh, then he introduced the notion of rigid isotopy. Of course, this notion is so natural that one can say it existed always. So it is just movement of a curve in the class of algebraic curves, sort of equi singular. No singularities, no singularities. If there are singularities, he didn't discuss the case of singular curves here. Uh, complex scheme of a curve is preserved under rigid isotopy, so we get immediately abstractions to rigid isotopy. And they were uh, realized uh, for low degree curves. Uh, all real schemes up to degree 6 were listed and their types were specified. Which one of them is of uh, type 1, of type 2, and uh, indeterminate type. I have no time to tell about this story uh, and some other things which were in this paper. It was a great paper, a survey, but uh, in a very intelligent way. Uh, all was, uh, it was the whole program uh, of study, uh, this sort of questions between real and complex was laid out, and it was done just for curves. It was very interesting to generalize, and still we do not know how to generalize, say, complex orientation formula. It is problem open till now, this, this type. But now I just want to finish with showing this picture. This is the same picture as in the beginning. Uh, it uh, shows uh, complex schemas of sextics of curves, non-singular curves of degree 6, from the same paper, which I do not like a lot. Because this paper is called 64 types or curves of degree 6. And the first impression when you read this paper is that this is the result of the authors. This result was obtained then, just slightly after that. So Rocklin showed this picture, not in a picture, but in a description, and uh, shortly after that, uh, Sturmfeld, uh, Sturmfeld, Nikulin. <laughs> Nikulin proved that uh, this classification is complete using K3 theory. Uh, anyway, um, what does this colors mean? Uh, so we have 64 rigid isotopy types, above the same 56 as we had before. Uh, now, uh, 
six real schemes of type 1, those which are red. The top schemes of type 1, then these two. So they tend to be top. It was a conjecture made in this paper, which was then proved to be wrong. But anyway, I don't have a time to tell the story. Uh, then uh, eight real schemes of indefinite, indefinite time. Uh, they are not uh, well re seen here. These are sort of uh, uh, magenta uh, pictures here. So these are curves, which uh, with schemes, which may belong to uh, curves of type one and type two. And uh, by the way, since uh, maybe they may belong to type one and type two, these curves, when when they, uh, the curve is moved by rigid isotopy, uh, the type doesn't change. So these are curves which look the same on the plane, but cannot be deformed to each other in the class of real algebraic curves. There are similar examples in uh, degree five. And uh, probably I would need to tell this uh, extension, how, how then it influenced to other, but it, it would require another talk like that. And maybe there are many talks in this conference which would show the further progress. So I, I stop here. Thank you. Thank you. You mean extension for another degree or what? Other degrees, other objects. Uh, the setup may change dramatically. For example, to construct real algebraic curves uh, or surfaces or whatever, it makes sense to reduce first to some degenerated situation to, to what is called tropical geometry, where everything is piecewise linear and then go back. And quite often it works. And, so, and there is a corresponding theory over there. You know, I could list. Uh, long, but uh, I have no time, definitely, for that. Questions? Yeah. Uh, okay. What is the reason was, uh, when this paper, what is the reason? What, what is the it's not a question to me. I asked him. Uh, he changed the introduction, but he didn't change abstract. And after that, Milner read this paper, and in his survey about some uh, other subject, wrote more or less that they, they constructed reference to, to, to him. So he showed me this, I was terrified really. It, it was after all these con uh, email exchanges, storm wheels and... Uh, no, I, I think that he knows what he's doing. Let me say it in this way. Thank you very much.